Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue my look at comparing different NAS brands. I want to talk about Synology and WD. These are two brands that I highlighted to a number of you as perfect NAS providers for a Plex Media server. But ultimately if you do buy a NAS you're going to want to use it for more than just as a Plex Media server. You want to use its backup tools, maybe its surveillance tools and more. And these are two brands that when it comes to counting your pennies and thinking about the right NAS on your budget can really stand out. But this video is going to be shorter than my other ones for one main reason. And that is that these two are just incomparable. Although they've got very similar hardware and both have got very, very similar um, ethos in terms of user friendliness, it has to be said that the Synology NAS series just gives you so much more. That's not to say that WD, and in this case their PL4100, isn't a good NAS. It genuinely is, but it just leaves me feeling very, very underwhelmed overall. So you've got these two NAS servers I've got here, the Synology and the QNAP. And straight away, if you're not familiar with either of these two NAS brands, let me straight away explain one of the main differences between them, and that is this user interface. The Synology is far similar to that of a desktop to PC. You've got your desktop here, you can change the wallpaper, you can go into control panels and install all these extra apps as you see here. And again, these apps are for you know handling photos and music and video, but there's more bespoke applications such as facial recognition and deep learning in Synology moments with facial tagging. Then you've got video station for lots of video apps. On top of that, you've got even more in terms of backing up other devices with their active backup suite. You've got a lot of apps here that you just don't find on other brands. But once we bring it down to the most basic level, this is one of the areas where I don't understand how my cloud has continued in this fashion. If we look at file station, File station on the Synology NAS is where you can create shared areas, that's folders that you can distribute with other users via the network or internet, or you can create completely bespoke one-off sharing download areas, all of that within file station. So real quick, we'll create a shared folder, and this will be a new shared folder that we can share over the internet or the network, and we're gonna call this share one. Actually, share one, two, three, make it easier. We're gonna, it's already on the volume. We've got a four TB drive inside this NAS, and we're gonna give it a recycling bin. We click next. We can encrypt it if we so choose, but we won't. We can uh, have certain limitations, the amount of data it can use, and of course, do checks in the background of that data periodically to make sure it's healthy. We carry on forward, and there we go. We're starting to set up our shared folder. We can select which user. We've only got two users on this NAS, but we're going to give them full read and write access. And there we go. There's the share one, two, three folder. And from here, we can create a share link if we want, or make our way back into the file manager. And there's share one, two, three. If we want to put files and folders inside, we can open up a folder here. This, here's an app that I'm currently working on for a QNAP video. But say we go for this some QNAP information here. We're just going to upload these four files here, maybe even an audio file as well, and we can drag and drop them into here. Let's go for this. Drag and drop them in. And if I remember correctly, we can drag and drop them. So we also want to overwrite because we've got old folders. And there you go. These files are now being uploaded into that folder on this Synology NAS. And then from here, we can then share the content of these either from an individual file level or share the entire folder. So again, loads of options open to you. You can go straight here. And again, share, do it. everything you need to do is completely easy. And you can manage those shared links in case you think at a later date, you've sent too many shares and you need to kill some of them off. It's all doable here. Now, this is where my biggest gripe with WD is, because this NAS here, the PR4100, has a quad-core Pentium chip. It's got, oh, do the password correctly. Oh, it does help if I turn the caps lock off. 
It has a quad-core Pentium CPU with 4 gig of memory. It is a powerful NAS, but in terms of user-friendliness, it just doesn't tick the boxes. If you arrive at this scene straight away, you're thinking, right, I'm, you know, you can set up some users, do check out my other video about the setup of the WD NAS, but where do you think you'd go to access your files? If you wanted to access all of your files here, well, you'd probably think to go to shares, maybe go to storage, but you don't. You have to go straight into the apps menu, and from the apps menu where it loads, this list, which is alphabetical, you have to make sure you install the web file viewer. Now, I'm not naive. I'm well aware that you can set up a mapped network drive on this device so it can appear on your Mac or Windows system. All NASes do that. But I do know a number of users will be accessing their NAS via the network or internet via this device's user interface. And it's just not very good to have this level of access on the back end be so basic. If we make our way into the shared folder to create a shared folder here, we go into shares, we click new folder, we'll call this one share123 as well. And from here, we've got all of the settings. And again, there's a few more settings readily available. We can create that network recycle bin. Um, we can't make a media server um, folder of it at this stage, but we can also set up different kinds of access. But again, the options for encryption aren't there, and there's a number of other things that aren't there. If we make our way back into the apps folder, into the web file viewer, we can see that folder now. And from here, we can head in, and we can upload, download files, and more. So let's see if we can copy those same files from earlier. And again, as you see, it just opened them in the web browser. It didn't let us just deposit those files in, which I think would be perfectly natural in the way most people would talk with this device. So how about if we upload files remotely from this? So we'll go into here, we'll select Upload, and again, you need to install, um, it needs to use Flash in order to do that. And it just, just doesn't feel organic. It doesn't feel natural to do that. Another area is installing those very apps as the files are finished. If you go to the package center on the Synology, it opens up and anyone that's ever used iTunes or Google Play is very familiar with this kind of installation. So say we wanted to install um, Synology Chat, for example. Synology Chat, which appears here, we can click Install, and it will start installing the app. If we click the icon, then maybe we would have started installing, um, we could have seen more about that installation as it goes. Once an app is installed, it appears here on the main Start menu, and you can add applications to this desktop if you so choose. Here's all the apps I've installed earlier. On the WD, we have to go into Apps, and we'll find an app, we'll install an app fresh. Let's go for, and there's far, far fewer apps on the WD side of things. How about if we install the Acronis True Image? So we'll click Install. We have all the terms and conditions. We click Install. And now we can't access this device until the installation is complete. We can go for another one. Let's install Icecast. And during this installation, we can't get to the user interface, at least in the case of the Synology, it's done in the back end. Now, moving forward from this, we can talk about other areas where you might use a NAS. Of course, as mentioned, Plex Media Server is going to be an important factor. And dare I say it, the hardware on the WD will definitely transcode in a Plex Media Server better. But unfortunately, it just doesn't have the great user interface that the Synology has. Now, of course, when you create user accounts with this device, these user accounts can have different kinds of access. So if we create a new user, and we have the new user tutorial there, we can create this brand new user here on the WD. So we're going to call this person new user. And we'll just call them new user again. Even better, we are just going to copy paste that same information in those fields. Again, you need um, you don't have to put this sort of information here, but we're going to at least give it a password for the sake of ease. And now we've created our new user, and you can state which folders they have access to. So 
we can configure the amount of data they're allowed, we can configure all kinds of things. And remember, this is from the business end of things. But now this user has been created. But accessing is in, isn't anywhere near as user friendly when accessing from the outside. Whereas with the Synology, if we want to create a new user, go into the control panel, nice and simple, go into user, create user, we use the same name that we used earlier. Give it a password. We can add an email if we so choose. We don't have to. Maybe I should put the password in. That will do it. Say what they've got access to, what their default rights are if we've already created user groups. Say which folders and files they're allowed to access. We can be quite bespoke. Moving into it. Then we can say which apps they can use. So we can actually really break it down that this user can only use certain elements of the device. And if you've got a family member, maybe you don't want them to have access to too much, you know, strong applications. Maybe you don't want your staff to access the surveillance station app. But one way or another, in this case, we're going to give them all. You can choose which apps they can use. And the same thing goes with group settings as well. If you use groups such as personnel, HR, and more. These are all things that are open to you. And that's it. It's really that straightforward. Now, there are so many more ways in which we could compare these two brands, but I'm going to leave it here because what it comes down to is this user interface. You can do so much more and so much more fluidly with a Synology NAS than you can with a WD. The WD is a Plex Media Server NAS is excellent, but there's no denying that going into the Plex Media Server application is a separate you know it's a separate deal when you're using plex on this device you're not using it to um access um the you know, user interface of the wd you're using it as a completely separate device and it should also be mentioned that a number of devices as you see here have now started not having the dub the plex media server application on the wd my cloud if you do want to get it you have to go to flex directly and find the application there. But I'm going to wrap things up here. I'll look at all my lovely videos. Um, I'm going to wrap things up here, but thank you so much for watching. I will be comparing the WD My Cloud with some other brands very similar to them that have got that same level of access. I'm talking about Buffalo. I'm talking about Netgear. And I'm even going to talk about Terramaster in later videos. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.